So I want to describe to you something I think is very interesting. I don't know if it's scientifically or mathematically precise, okay? But I also don't really care because it's great imagery. If I said to you that there was a little engine that could, right? It was a book that we read to kids, a little engine that could. The little engine says, I think I can, I think I can. And that teaches kids what? The power of confidence and believing in oneself. And no little engine ever did that. The story's a total lie, and yet we read it to kids all the time. I think I, think I can, I think I can is a valuable thing to think for yourself, right? And so it's good imagery to think of a train doing that, okay? So I'm going to look at one of Einstein's famous equations, actually his most famous equation, equals mc squared, and I'm going to do a little math with it. And I think it works. Uh, I didn't check with anybody, but I'm pretty confident that it works. But it's really the imagery that matters, right? What we can see in this equation is what the most important part of it is, okay? So while we're interested in being scientifically pure here, what I want you to see is what it's suggesting, okay? So most everybody I know has heard of e equals mc squared. And it's really simple. Most people understand that the E is energy and the M is mass. And the C squared is a constant, which is the speed of light squared. So we've got energy equaling mass times the speed of light squared. Basically, the way Einstein taught it is that everything is a, is a different manifestation of the same thing. I like to say the equals is the most important part of this. That which is energy is the same thing, that which is mass. Our bodies have mass. And yet the mass is actually energy. And on the lowest of levels, Einstein and friends looked deep into this, deep into to, to matter. What they ended up finding was just light, really. Light is just visible energy. And so what you have is stuff that we can't see equaling stuff that we can see. And again, Einstein, different manifestations of the same thing. Okay. And so here I want you to think about who you actually are using this equation, okay? So it's a, it's a fun equation to consider, but if we break it down and we play with the math just a little bit, you'll see something should pop out at you. Ultimately, you should pop out at you. So let's just look at math, a normal math equation. 10 equals 2 times 5. This is true. What can I do to this equation and still keep it true? If I took the 2 and I put it underneath the 10, Two divide, a 10 divided by 2 equals 5. That is still true. I took one uh, part from this side and I put it under this side. I divided it and I still have the same equation. A little bit different form, but it's still the same equation. So what if I did the same thing with e equals mc squared? So if I have e and I take the c squared and I put it under the e, e divided by c squared equals m. Using the same logic, that equation would be the same, right? Because this is mass times light. I drop the c squared underneath the e, just like I dropped the 2 underneath the 10. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So I can divide e, energy, divided by c squared, and I have m. So what is c squared? What is light squared? Light squared is 700 million miles per hour, OK? It just means a really, really big, fast number. And if I take energy and I divide it or reduce it, because when I take 10, I've reduced it by half to get a 5. If I take energy and I reduce it by a really, really, really fast number, what happens? Mass shows up. So if you think of E being you, your eternal you, your spiritual you, your soul, the spirit, all of that, if you think of that, because that's energy, and you reduce that energy by a huge number, meaning if we slow it down, up pops your body. Because that's what M is. You are mass. And so what are we? We are spiritual beings reduced, slowed down energetically. We're slowed down, and now we're bodies. Now, that's looking at e equals mc squared, having a little fun with it. I hope it works mathematically, but it certainly works visually. Uh, to, to use the imagery to see what are we really. We are energy beings slowed down significantly, and now we're walking around as bodies. Let's see if this correlates with spiritual teachings. Of course it does. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says you should have elevate yourself by the self. Elevate yourself by the self. What does that mean? Well, once you've been reduced into physical form, you're still the energy. You're just slowed down spirit. And so your true self is here right now. All of us are spiritually our souls right now, but you're also a body. Now we have two selves, though. 
We have a physical self and we have the spiritual self and both are present. And we need to use the one to actually elevate the other. Use yourself to elevate the self. We are given a physical body for spiritual development purposes. The Course of Miracles says use the flesh to teach the spirit. Jesus describes the physical world as the footstool and the kingdom of heaven as the throne. What you are is the E, slowed down into matter. And so you have to use the one self to elevate the other self. That's what we're here to do. Krishna says it's a double spirit, both transient and eternal. Transient is temporary. And we know which one that is. The M is transient. It's temporary. The eternal self is the E. That's not going away. This works just like H2O does. If I have H2O in liquid form and I slow it down because I've lowered its temperature, I now have a solid form. H2O slowed down, mass shows up, and it's now an ice cube. The H2O is still there though, right? Same thing, different form. If I slow down water by cooling it, now I'm an ice cube. If I slow down energy or spirit, now I have a physical body. It's a double spirit. Now the ice cube is temporary because I can heat it up again. Then it goes away. Guess what happens to you in the physical form? It's going to go away as well. But you're not going to ever lose touch with that eternal form. It's who and what you are eternally. It's why Jesus says, man is born once of flesh and a second time of spirit. And the word Buddha means to wake up. To realize that even though you're in physical form, you're actually your pure spiritual self right now. Krishna teaches that a man without mastery of this concept, the self, is an enemy at war. Because if you think you're just the M, if you don't know you're a spiritual self, and you don't work on that, you're going to be an enemy at war. And the enemy is you. Jesus eventually teaches we must love our enemies. He's talking about this dynamic. You are fighting yourself. You are both spiritual and physical at the same time, but what you are is eternally spiritual. And if we forget that and we fall in love with the M, which basically is the ego, if we fall in love with the physical self and we spend all our time judging that physical self and comparing it to others, either favorably or unfavorably, I'm better than you, you're better than me. I feel shame because of this or you should feel bad because of that. All of that stuff creates the pain. Well, all of it is using the self to master the self, to elevate the self. And a person without that mastery, the self is an enemy at war. And so you've got this battle going on inside your head. This is ultimately the jihad and what's going on in the, the spiritual war in Islam is happening inside our heads. I have to defeat the enemy that's inside my own head, just as you do. All of us have the same common enemy. So to be born again is to recognize two of the most ancient aphorisms one in Greek and one in Latin, Nothe Sayatan and Temet Naska, they both mean the same thing. They both mean know thyself. See, because if you think of yourself as a physical being, be it American or, or Canadian or European or uh, white or black or old or young, you know, any number of the labels, that's just all M stuff. That's all physical world focus. Oh, it's temporarily true, that's for sure. But if that's all you think you are, you're missing out on the much, much bigger aspect of this. You're an eternal E. You are a spiritual being. To know yourself is to know who you really are. It doesn't mean you have to really know what you are physically, although that's important while you're here in the physical world. But what we all have to do is come out of the closet as spiritual beings, because that's what we are. All of us are actually spiritual beings in this physical form. We're just slowed down energy, slowed down spirit. And once you know that, now you can win the war. You love your enemy. It was always the ego all along. And it's yours. Don't be blaming anybody else. It's you figuring yourself out. Once you've figured that out, you've unified this double spirit inside yourself. Now you can proceed peacefully the rest of your life, knowing that your eternal spiritual self is never far away. And now you have a much more peaceful physical self. It's really the essence of being a peacemaker. It's not about bringing peace to war on earth because that's not going to happen. It's a messy place down here. But the peace is when you find it inside yourself. When you rectify the difference between the spiritual eternal self, the energy that you are, 
and the temporary flesh self, the physical self that we think we are. 